From bonsai charges with samurai swords to dropping napalm in Vietnam, the Rising Storm games have a special place in every tactical shooter fan's heart. They're not as arcadey as your Battlefield games, but not quite hardcore like Arma or even Squad. Between the vehicles, Commander Collins, Gore, and that hardcore gunplay, Antimatter's Rising Storm 2 Vietnam is still, even seven years later, arguably the best Vietnam game on the market. This is why we were all excited for the devs next installment in this hardcore series when the official announcement trailer dropped for 83 back in 2019. 83 was going to be a Cold War gun hot game where the NATO forces would square off against a fictional war against the Soviet Union and the rest of the Warsaw Pact in that familiar gunplay and style that we're used to seeing from Rising Storm but now with all that cool technology that the 80s brought. It's not quite futuristic modern and it's definitely a step above 60s and 70s Vietnam. This was looking good, it was looking promising, and had years of development under its belt when they canceled it. And they didn't just cancel it, they canceled it in order to prioritize development on IGI Origins, a sequel to the single player Project IGI, which was released back in 2000, and is essentially a Cold War agent spy game. I'm not saying that this nostalgic shooter doesn't tug at the memories we had all growing up and there's definitely a cult following for it, but that's kind of a big shift when you've had successful multiplayer games in the past. And what's worse is after this pause of 83 in focus on IGI Origins, Antimatter Games as a whole was actually shut down. This not only sent Project IGI into game dev purgatory, but also any hopes of continuing development on 83. It looked like the large-scale, hardcore multiplayer FPS games that we've all known and loved for two decades, starting way back with Red Orchestra, was finally coming to an end. But then we got this tweet. Blue Dot Games are delighted to announce that we have finalized an agreement with ENAD Global 7 regarding the use of the 83 IP. Well, that was last year, and now earlier this week, we finally have gotten a promotional screenshot and a marketing push to wishlist 83 the game on Steam and join their Discord. So is this, like, actually happening? Who are Blue Dot Games? What is Enad Global 7? And are we really going to be able to play 83? Let's break it down. First off, I'm happy to say that 83 is back. The game is surprisingly in full development and it has even had alpha testing, all thanks to Blue Dot Games. The founder of Blue Dot is Tony Gilham, the same Tony Gilham who actually founded Antimatter Games in 2013, and he somehow managed to work out a deal with Enad Global 7 last year to develop 83. If you've never heard of Enad Global 7, you're probably not the only one. EG7 is a holding company that manages various game studios and is publicly traded. So long story short, last year it was decided by the board that Antimatter was no longer profitable for the shareholders and was shut down. However, in true capitalist fashion, although EG7 has publicly stated that the studio behind 83 and the game itself were no longer a good fit with their core strategy, they will still, of course, be able to profit from the sales of 83 due to a royalty deal. Gotta love capitalism. The good news is that after reading this official press release, although they are just licensing the IP, it does look like Blue Dot Games has full control over the game's development itself. And with a studio that was built from pretty much just the antimatter employees that were actively developing 83 previously, there's every reason to believe that the game can actually live up to being the sequel to Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. But saying they're developing it and posting a screenshot is one thing. What does this game actually look like? Well, the devs have had to work through about a year of pause and development, taking everything that had been worked on previously and then bringing it up to par, working through old code, and making sure it's actually going to be a fun game. Although we don't know for sure what has happened in the six or seven months of development since the licensing deal went through, Blue Dot has a very, very good base to work from. The current factions we actually know about in game are the US, British, and Soviets, and we actually have a full weapons list offering some very familiar weapons to play with. We've got your usuals like the M16A1, the M60 machine gun, the AK-74, and the Dragunov sniper rifle. But we also have some lesser known weapons like the L1A1 SLR, known as the British Fowl, 
the Sterling L2A3 submachine gun, and the L4A4 Bryn, essentially a World War II Bryn light machine gun rebarreled to fire 762. Infantry combat as a whole will be very familiar to veterans of the Rising Storm or Red Orchestra games, with things like weapon resting and bracing to even the ability to interrupt weapon reloads. This is such a cool feature. You can actually stop reloading midway through the animation, and if you happen to start that reload while still having a round in the chamber, you can fire. The round is there, right? So why not? This is so cool. It is so detailed, and it just takes a special kind of dev team to think, hey, if we pause the reload animation while you're reloading and you weren't completely dry, how can we make that fire? There's also going to be some form of destruction in game and a gore system. You can't have a Rising Storm game without gore. For destruction, based on the developmental videos I've seen, in order to keep the performance reasonable since this is a large scale game, destruction will be through something called vertex animation textures. Think of them kind of like simulated destruction animations and they actually look pretty good. You're not gonna be able to destroy everything in a unique way, but more so every time you destroy a map asset, it will run a simulated destruction sequence and that will help the performance of the game as a whole. I love seeing destruction and this is a very good workaround into making a game that we can actually play without needing a supercomputer. Now for the gore, uh, YouTube is weird when it comes to things like gore, even if it's video game gore. So although I can't show everything here without this video being demonetized, there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about. You don't just see the usual things like limbs exploding and seeing just a torso, but you also actually have visual bleeding. You have blood pooling underneath bodies, you have soaking of the uniforms, and you even have cut marks from stab wounds to differentiate them from bullet holes. The whole gore system, it's gruesome, it's insanely cool, and it will make for some crazy moments. I wish I could show them, but I, I don't trust YouTube. I've included the link down in the description below. Go check it out. Watch the whole dev vlog. It's awesome. Now, although we don't have any details on these just yet, it has been confirmed that we'll also be able to have player controlled tanks and helicopters. Planes, however, will be more in line with what we're used to seeing in Rising Storm and will be reserved for command call-ins. It appears we'll also have other command call-ins like artillery or mortar barrages, which we can see here. And the devs have gone into crazy detail into making sure they actually look like real artillery. Everything I've seen from the devs just makes me want to buy into this game even more. They even released a whole blog where they went to the world's largest tank museum and brought in all of their recording equipment and made super in-depth and detailed recordings of every little movement that would happen in a tank. From reload animations to hatches to little metal parts clanging against each other. These types of things are what I love to see in games and it just makes me so happy to see that this is being revitalized and the devs are going to have a chance to finally see this game realized. Now finally, one of my favorite parts of the Rising Storm series was this persistent campaign mode, where players would actually be able to play certain maps based on wins or losses in the previous maps. As a team, you can actually decide where you want to attack and defend on this large campaign map, and you would play through the campaign until one side won or lost. There's not too many details on 83's campaign just yet, but this was such a cool feature in the past games, and looking at trailers showing a bunch of potential areas to fight over in Europe and even North Africa, we might be in for some awesome maps. As a whole, 83 was something I really had completely forgotten about until earlier this week, and I've gotta say, I don't know if I've been this excited for a game for a very long time. I'm not gonna lie, the animations, the graphics, it does look a little dated. I don't know if they are gonna upgrade from UE4 to UE5, but the Rising Storm games, Red Orchestra games, I don't really play them for the best graphics in the world. I can get over the kind of janky old style graphics if the gameplay is really good. Looking into 83 and researching stuff for this video has actually thrown me down a rabbit hole of reinstalling and replaying all of the old Red Orchestra and Rising Storm titles. So if you haven't done it before, go check it out on Steam. If you haven't installed it in a while or played it in a while, open it up. Rising Storm 2 Vietnam still has hundreds of players on any given day. Seriously, the games hold up, they're awesome, and it's great to know that we'll be getting a newer one in the future. We don't have a date just yet, but just a few months ago, the devs actually added 500 NDA to closed testers, so gameplay videos of these tests might actually be released sooner than we think. 
But what do you guys think? Is 83 something you're looking forward to? Do you like the gunplay of Rising Storm and are happy to see it make a return? Or are you waiting for more info before getting your hopes up? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace.